Hey everybody, this is Eddie from Talking Shit. I just want to thank everyone out there that has donated to the show. You're really helping support the show and keeping this show going. Uh, donations are what keep it rolling. If you look in or on our on our webpage and look, we got a lot of people working on the show. Everyone from Machete that we have to feed a lot of tacos to to keep them that big. We have Lilith that we have to. Uh, she's got to buy a lot of vibrators. We have Jesse who gets drunk. Uh, we've got to pay for his alcohol. Ray Roy has a sex addiction. And, uh, and me and Eddie's counseling isn't cheap. Yeah, and, and the therapy that we get, we pay Lilith for. Uh, Jason, it's a whole other story. You keep him alive. So think about it. Uh, if you haven't donated and you're a big fan of the show, if you had like a TV show you liked, you'd go out and buy the DVD series, and that would cut, it cost you like 30 bucks or something, or 40 bucks or 50 bucks. So whatever, just, you know, we give you an hour of entertainment every week. Just please. Two hours. Two hours. That's true. Two hours every week. So please. Sometimes two hours and five or 10 minutes. That's true. That's true too. So, uh, if sometimes can, a bit less sometimes like 52 minutes yeah but that's when we I say the n word I wouldn't donate that much for those weeks okay um, but so donate do it go to our website and we also send you stuff Ray is on it right now he just got all the mailing supplies you should all expect your uh, t-shirts posters DVDs all kinds of stuff like that so please go to our website continue to donate and we thank you very much from the show and we're actually being sincere for once now we're going to start this episode without our guest because he's fucking late. Brendan Burns is not here. We're starting the show without him, but we have better news. The Hour of Power is back. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, Jim. I appreciate right. that. What did I do? We're going to start the show now, Jason. Yeah. I went, right. yeah. Well, let's start the show. See the douchebags on a couch. One's a missile, one's a grouch. And relentless. Oh! All right, we're in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jim and Eddie Talk Shit. I'm Jim Jeffries. I'm here with Jason Hour and Eddie Yift. Hello, Jason. How are you? Hi. <coughs> hi, Eddie. Hi, Jason. How are you? Why aren't you saying hi, Jim? Hi, Jim. Weeks. Thank you. You look good. Thank you. You look, you look strong. Your hair looks well done. <laughs> you don't look high. I'm not high. Why not? Uh, because you, it's been a few hours. Did you go to re- Have you been in rehab for the last no, month? No, not at all. Don't lie to us. No, I was in Santa Barbara today, though. What were you doing in Santa Barbara? Selling hair color. You're famous. No. Do you know? I, you know how I knew you were in Santa Barbara? I go in the coffee shop, and uh, I go to the guy behind the counter, Zach. I go, <laughs> "How you doing today, Zach?" He goes, "It's a great day." And, and I go, "Why?" He goes, "It's a Jason Hour free day." <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what, Zach? I came in. <laughs> Half hour before you closed, didn't I? <laughs> Why does he hate you so much? Oh, he doesn't hate me. He just despises me. Yeah. <laughs> Why does he despise you so much? I don't know. Does he really dislike having you around? Yeah, uh, yeah that, I guess so. He said to Thanks, me. Thanks, L- Lily says yeah. He goes. He comes to the. Sh- he comes does to he the coffee to shop. He's oh. here from oh. no- noon till seven p.m. He says I'm a cock block. Jason, shut the fuck up. Oh. There was a there was another day, Jason, where I went in there and Zach said it was a Jason Hour free I blew day. That day too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said he's like this I is a wonderful day, and and he he goes because he said Jason comes in at noon and he said he's here till till like six p.m. till I close and he's here and he just sits at the coffee shop all day long. And that day it was like 6 p.m. and he goes, I'm closing up. Jason hasn't been here. Blah blah blah. And that's the night we all went out and we went to we went to In and Out. And we went to the midget convention, and on Wolf, the way on the way back, Wolf. LPA little people. On the way back, we went to that store to get Snickers ice cream bars. <laughs> yeah, and who's in there? But oh, Zach. that guy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's the guy who dislikes. He you. went yeah. off today about it was hilarious. He goes, he lives right next door. He goes, I don't understand. He goes, I used to be liberal. I used to think that government should help people out, and then I see Jason, and I'm like. Fuck this. Fuck this. I pay taxes and it just goes to him to fucking hang out at the coffee shop all day long. I had this fight with Jason yesterday. <laughs> Jason actually thinks him being unemployed is helping the world. Yeah, explain how. No. No, explain yeah. what you told us yesterday. No. Explain it. No. Why? No. Why not? I don't want to talk about it. You're off the show. Okay. <laughs> I really don't want no, to talk no, about it. Put, really... put your microphone okay. down. Okay. Right, right. You're off. Okay, you're we'll just on, go over the philosophy of it then. We've talked about you being on unemployment a yeah, thousand, thousand times. times. I know. I just Okay, so Jason, 
you explained to us in the coffee shop the other day that a lot of people, when they, they take off time, they go off and the government pays for them to get an education right. so that they can start a new career. Right. Well, in and, other countries, typically, yes. That's not true. Yeah, but, but In Israel, they do. In <laughs> France, they do. Okay. So what do you... Everything happens okay, in France. So, in, so for the past two France, years... In France, the medical department, the doctor comes to your house and they build a hospital in your room. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> for the past two years... By the way, how many times have you left the country? Uh, in my life? Yeah. I'm being five. You have never left. You haven't well, left Venice. I wasn't even born in the country. He was born in Panama. In Panama, we know and I, that. And I and I lived in Germany until I was three. Yeah, but since then, have you left the country? Yeah, <laughs> that's new. When, really? When the fuck did you live in Germany? I lived in live? Karlsruhe, Germany. Yeah. No, when no, did you I, When did you leave the country last? Uh, probably my honeymoon. Where'd you go? St. Martin. Really? Uh huh. I went to, and I went to Trinidad with the church. Um, wait, wait, but but what you said that the government basically threw your unemployment for the last. Well, it's an two insurance years. program that you, you actually, the employer, the employee, right, and the government, right, are in a I guess like a partnership on this. Yeah, yeah. Right. You're only, they, they you're one only, unemployed. It helps the it helps the economy. You're entitled to a <laughs> you're entitled to a certain amount based on how much you worked consistently. Mm, right. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So I was entitled to the maximum amount. Because yeah. barista, and you know, is a but fucking two hundred fifty thousand dollar a year job. But I was almost in that job for six years. That's that's almost retirement. Oh, the mid, the the amount of money that I would ever you have like the equivalent of an it's NFL like pension. How much do you think you've paid in your life in taxes? I don't know because you no, know, you could work out a figure. Let's say yeah, you yeah, average ten guess. grand a year have, for this many years. I don't even remember much of what happened before sixteen months ago, dude. I don't remember my life too much. Give anymore. an estimate. On I had like a checkout. I'm. <laughs> I'm fried. Uh, you I have no idea how much taxes I pay. You paid. don't know how many taxes you paid. But let's do you remember get... ever paying taxes? Do you remember, oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. the day that you Fuck. went you had an accountant? Did you yeah, have my, fill out a 1040 form yeah, yeah. or Well, anybody? my dad, my dad, my dad does taxes for the uh the retired people, you yeah. know? Yeah, because yeah, like, they're working. A, no, no, as if he donates his time because he's like he, Why does he have to do taxes for retired no, people? No, he donates his time to people that are elderly and retired, and he does their taxes for them. Why are they, like your why are they doing the taxes? They're retired. Because even if you're on a fixed income, you have to fill out the forms and do the paperwork. Even if, like They have investments, they have IRAs, whatever. you know. All right. But let's get back to my point is, so you're basically saying that what you're doing is you, you've been on unemployment for two years to get an education Not to start your next career. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've learned an awful lot about hair color in the last year. <laughs> what else? Uh, you, you meant today, today or yesterday you were telling us like you're, it's getting you somewhere. You're yeah, progressing yeah, I've a been, new phase I've been, of I've your life. I've been working towards, you know, building up, you know, to some what? things that... What? Getting out of bed in the morning? What have you been, <laughs> what have you been building up towards? <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, what have you built up towards? Success, Jim. <laughs> success. What? How, what is your level of success? I don't, whatever you perceive it to be, I guess. And what do you perceive success to be? <laughs> Growing an awesome tash. <laughs> <laughs> free T-shirts. <laughs> we got some killer free T-shirts this From week. Who? From who? From uh, fine Southern gentlemen. Not, Thank you very not much. Not killing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. You know, everyone deserves credit for that. That's Brendan Burns. He's Brendan our guest. Burns, that was Hello, late. Brendan. Um, Brendan was late. Yeah, thanks for being late. Brendan's an hey, old hey, friend hey, of ours. Why were you late, Brendan? Because um, I'm with Provenza, and he got lost three blocks from his no, house. Paul, you're bullshit, blaming Paul bullshit. Provenza Paul for Proven your lateness. Paul Provenza yes. has been to this house over 20 times. Did he just drop yeah. you off and leave? <laughs> he got lost. He didn't get lost. Oh, he's he right there. Fucking did. <laughs> I didn't even Hang see on. him sneaking over there. Hang hey, on. Paul. <laughs> we turn up late. You guys, were, you you guys, were, watching, you the guys were watching the, it's the British version of the Jersey Shore called the Geordie yes. Shore. Yes. That's why you were late. Because you texted me and told me. It's amazing. I know it, but the thing is, it doesn't matter. We've got... No, no, I wasn't watching that instead. Be impressed I got him out of the house in time. He but said it was a 15-minute walk from his house. Yeah. I got him out of the house at quarter two. Now, how much pot did he smoke on the way here? No, nah, he smoked some before leaving. <laughs> look, look, now Jason just signaled to him as soon as he heard the word. He went, <laughs> oh, I, can, I can get my Opa! free fix. You know what I like about this? Jason didn't want us to talk about his unemployment because he thought... <laughs> But thought it'll, the, he but thought the government might be listening. <laughs> but he has no but problem talking about drug addiction. He openly speak about drug addiction on the thing. And now what, what's his next sentence? But I have medical problems. Not the time you were on cocaine why fucking example punched you. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, example the singer from Britain. You know, like, he's he's got like the number one album in the UK. Number one artist in, in Britain. Did the cocaine make it hurt less? May, may I say, for example, that he wasn't. 
Doing drugs. <laughs> yeah. I was the only one not doing... <laughs> the only person the, doing them was Jason. Everyone, exactly. Everyone else has Because I was lose. experimenting. It was my first time, and I wanted to know. I didn't want to be ignorant about my judgments. <laughs> was the example he, working at the time? Because no. I used to be a no, judge. No, and I'll be honest. Like, I did... doesn't it. want people to know Okay, I'll working. talk about it. I did cocaine, God damn it. You know why? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you know why I did God, cocaine? You, you, t- you tell me why. Because I didn't want to be a, a fucking ignorant dickhead and condemn all the people I thought were assholes for doing it all the time that was cool then you shouldn't have done it two weeks so you became one of them (laughs) (laughs) you you can't do it week after week to prove that people aren't assholes I gotta tell you (laughs) I gotta tell you in this company when you declare like anything with all right, all right, all right," and then finish with god damn it cocaine isn't really that big a deal it should be like I fucked a guy or an animal that's like "All right, I fucked a guy god damn it the truth is out (laughs) yeah God damn it. I like how he called our country a company, and that's probably more accurate. No, he said uh, no, this. In present company. In present oh, in this company. Com- oh, it's, I'm having language problems. <laughs> you have a but lot he, more he, than he, language he problems. You don't look like I expected. I've heard the podcast. <laughs> he, I'm not he, as he fatty. He looks like he could fuck you up. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, yeah. wait. <laughs> like, he takes a lot he's, of shit. He's got, I, he's got mom careful. strength. I think you're actually just constructing he's, your own death He's, he's, got, he's gonna go <laughs> just, postal just one day. Just both of you poking a man he, until he, he fucking he, snaps. Yeah, yeah, that's that's no, not out of the realm of possibility. What'll end up happening is I accidentally kill like a little girl by a river, and then the town kills me. I won't hurt <laughs> yeah, these yeah. guys. Yeah, but it turns out if you kill little girls, you don't go to prison. So that's I don't all know. right. That always says. Oh, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah, topical. Let's ask, let's ask topical. The, let's ask the resident therapist, Lalit. Is there any chance of Jason snapping and killing us? Yeah, it's like the first person. His first one will be someone he no, knows. No, no, really, really. And let's do, face it, he's declared he wants you, to live in you, Jim's I, skin. I, I've you, seen you get angry, Jason. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Yeah, you yeah. give him the wrong drug. You've hit people. You give that boy the wrong drug, he's going to fucking cut he you open and out. fuck the hole. He has Asperger's. <laughs> Delayed? Oh. Did you say I delayed onset Aspergers? <laughs> you know what he's upset about that? Delayed. <laughs> <laughs> he, he thought he's had it for years. How about, how about Luke sent me a Luke sent me Best a text and said, "I'm pretty sure I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm 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 very similar to Jason except for the Aspergers." <laughs> yeah. And you can see through him. No. Hey, I'm hey, Don't make fun of his albinoism. Oh, I... So why, why? Let's talk to Brendan. Oh. I guess for a while. Brendan, why why are you in the UK? What's happening? Why am I in the UK? In the not. United States. Why are you, Why are you in America? Why are you <laughs> I'm just out doing a couple of gigs. All right, what gigs are you doing? Plug them now. Uh, UCB tomorrow. Okay, that's Comedy good. This, this, this show's going out after tomorrow. Yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, how, how did that one go? Yeah, how did your show go? <laughs> uh, well, they just stared at me waiting for Bob Odenkirk. Uh-huh. If, if, so anyone, if anyone here has a time machine, you can go see a show at the UCB Woo! Theater. And what's the other one? Uh, Hollywood Improv on Thursday. Yeah, that's good. This goes out midday on Thursday. Oh, they there can we see go. that. So, if you got yeah. this so, and you have um, nothing to do. Th- three hours late on that show. What else you got for us? <laughs> uh, the, uh, <laughs> it's the late show. That's your people, isn't it? Yeah, but they'd have to get in their car real quick and you wouldn't want to listen to the whole episode. You'd have to be, <laughs> you'd have to, you'd have to be out there. I think you said midday it goes out. No, no, midnight. Midnight. Oh, it goes out midnight. He, he did yeah, say midnight. midday. It's midnight. Mid- so, midnight yeah. so we're going to miss you by about. you miss you by three hours. All right, then I got nothing. <laughs> I am purposeless. But, but follow follow Brendan. See if he does anything in the future. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he might he might be out in your town. Make make, make a note of it. <laughs> We've a lot of people listen to us in the UK. What are you doing in the UK when you get back? Fuck. Uh, Why aren't you at the Edinburgh Festival? It starts today. Yeah. This is the first. Yeah, no. We, we, it can't, are you skipping it this without, year? Without, yeah. without me and Brendan, there is no Edinburgh Festival. There is no Edinburgh Festival. We, we it's are, my first break in 12 years. I think we can say that we're stalwarts of the, of the festival. How many, how many years have you done it? I did it uh, six years in a row. Six years in a row, and you did it 12 years in a row. Yeah. And how are you not doing it this You year? did a couple of one year on, one year off, though, didn't you? No. No? I only right. took one year off. Yeah. That's, um, that's not 12 in a row. Uh, only then. No, 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 no. Since I took the last one off, it's been 12 years. Oh, okay. Hang on. No, that can't be right. I think you might be right. Yeah, you took one. I remember you took one off in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Or I might have done a half run. Uh, because I was <clears> going <throat> to be on honeymoon. But then it turns out everywhere we wanted to go on honeymoon is in monsoon season. Oh. But I'm taking time to write, uh, time off to write as well. You, you, wh- what places are on monsoon season that you couldn't have taken your, your love? I don't life? know. It's a surprise because everywhere she showed me. You know, it's not in monsoon season. Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah. we're going to end up there. Antigua. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's basically, we looked at everywhere. Bermuda. In the, in the luxury honeymoon Here. places. Bali. And they all look so excitable. They all look so plush that I kept on going, well, you know what I'm like. I going, Let's go there. Let's go there. Oh, oh. I just did an impression of me to people that. 
And <laughs> so, I'll, 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 do, I'll do an impersonation of Brendan Burns. He's one of the few people that you can make just a sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to do the yeah, same. Yeah, I was going to go, it. nah. That's how I'm you doing start doing every sentence. If, Bre- if Brendan wants to talk, it's ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've met comics like from around the world and they'll go, I, there's this guy, Brendan, and you go, ah. They go, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm easy to place. <laughs> Brendan one time heckled me during my show. He walked in. We were doing a show together. He comes in. The oh, yeah, he, he loves well, to let people know well, he's in the room. Well, I'm on stage. He goes, ah, yeah, ah. <laughs> you know, it just happened. And I'm like, we're going to have a conversation while I'm on stage. <laughs> And oh, hang on. Are you talking about... Um, you, you got in an argument with the security... No, you got in an argument with the security no. card. You know, like, you know Brendan's butted in on your routine a few times when he, he doesn't know which one it was. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was it a time? Was it... When I... Exactly. Do you know what when I used to... Was I you, cutting you off during... Do, do you know what I used to There's do? There's no point saying name once. Just go... Brendan... Look, let's just wait for the next time you do it. Do you know what I used to do to you at uh, in Edinburgh when I would do gigs? I would tell them to take you to the bar and get you drunk. Really? Because I said, if you don't, he's coming on stage with me. <laughs> I once, I was once doing a gig. I was once not even doing a gig. I was once in a bar in Edinburgh at the Caves, and um, I think that was the gig where Tanya Lee Davis teabagged oh, that's, Mickey D. That's where I tried to get you to no, do a pull. In a glass. Yeah, I'll get to that. She Brendan. didn't teabag. Oh. He teabagged her. So I'm just in another bar talking to a girl, just in the bar, right? <laughs> and. Uh, I have some fucking stupid comedy lackey cunt, you know, one of those low-level fucks who wants to be in the industry, and he runs in going, Jim Jeffries, Jim Jeffries, you have to come to the caves right now. I was in another bar. Brendan has decided that he wants me to shit in a box. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the most funny Aussie things afterwards. Jim was new then as well, so who's willing to do I'd anything? I'd be in the festival of the No, I'm not going to shit in a box. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you, there's, there's a very crucial part of this you're missing as well is they because at the Fat Caves, the, rule, the rules were when I was doing Sundays, people were allowed to write down dares. And put him in okay, a glass. This is a Brendan thing right here. And Brendan someone... made a rule where. No, 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 no
and I'm trying to type to him on my iPhone to get like tell him what's happening. And he pulls out his passport, shows me he's German. So I get into the hardest game of charades I've ever been in in my life. And I finally get the guy's bags out of there. And then I show him where the Hotel Irwin is. And he goes to me like, how much? He signals how much? And I go, I don't know. It's like two, three hundred a night. And he goes, yeah, yeah. and then he goes, yeah. and he shows me $60 with his hands. He goes, me. Yeah. And then like charades, I'll stay at your place. And I'm like, no, you're not fucking staying in my house. You're not staying. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, those and Germans, like, I'll come in without you. It's asking. like, <laughs> like 2.30 in the morning. And he's like, yeah. and I'm like, $60? Hold on. Maybe Jason will let you stay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, would, that would, would that would, would be like an episode of Hostel. <laughs> <laughs> would you have let him stay there? I mean, the organs alone on the black market, you know. Would you have let this Jason, deaf German guy stay at your place for you're 60 funny bucks for when the you're the not night. trying to be funny. Answer the questions; it's always funnier. I only know in the moment what I'm going to do when I'm be presented with. Why can't you ever answer a question? I mean, I really don't know. I can't answer now because it's not a reality. If this moment happened right now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's still hypothetical. I don't know. Use your imagination. It's not hypothetical for you to shit in a box right now. How much would you take? How much <laughs> yeah, to shit true. in a box? Right now, I wouldn't let him stay in my house. No, I have <laughs> to shit in a box. <laughs> <laughs> how much to shit in a box right now? I, don't, I can't. <sighs> No, he's not high. No. <laughs> it's worse when he's he, high. He's just, he's just got high. real, man. <laughs> this is me. So Bre- Brendan never finished his shit yeah. in the box story. Yeah, get back to oh. the shit in the box. So. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. So. Ah. 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 <laughs> Brendan fucking burns. Ah. Yeah. Fucking yeah. burns. <laughs> so. <laughs> You be Brendan, I'll be Mernsey. Mate, uh, it's not you. Uh, hey, uh, uh, mate, it's not me. Fucking it's you. Fuck, 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 Come on, finish the story. No, you know nothing if it goes anywhere when it's like, now go on, finish the story. Okay. It's too tempting. Don't right, finish wait, the story. Okay, don't finish the story. <laughs> Jason, how much you shit in a box? <laughs> Mate. <laughs> don't, don't stop it. No, honestly, finish the story. Okay. Uh, oh, so we, uh, we pulled around uh, yeah. to get, like everyone stuffed money in a jar. Yeah. And then there was quite a bit of money in the end. And then Jim couldn't find a shit, but he had like a face. Of, we, said, we even talked him into it because we said, we'll hold a towel up. So then he had like a you face You went like, on stage. Yeah, you course acted he did. like this never, is the stupidest idea. Yeah, yeah. I was never going to shit in a box. No, no, no. But he said, look if I, look if I had play, one. I played but up to was, the cameras. But he was looking at the ground going, look if I had one, I'd do it. I'd do it. I'd do it. Yeah, it could be funny. Were you yeah. shooting blood yeah. back then? So, no. So, wait are, a second. Okay. These are the good old days. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, so then we start asking people in the crowd whether or not they could muster up a shit. And because by then when I think we'd had a couple of weeks of the fat case, people kind of turned up uh, with like car crash mentality. If they'd stick around and they didn't know what was going to happen. So everyone in the room had that kind of look on their face of if someone does a poo, I'm not really going to be that comfortable. Or everyone had a look on their face of I wonder if I've got a shit brewing. Mm. But it was exactly the same face. <laughs> that everyone looked exactly. Did anyone? The same. Did anyone shit? No. And then someone came up to me afterwards. I think it was the Fred. Shit that never was. Who even said, "Look, I know you want to do, fellas, whatever you want to do, but but shit, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which I love that from a from a producer. But shit, well, really? That that show used to get pretty crazy, and it was it was crazy in the UK, and it was really tame in Australia because everybody was a pussy in Australia about it, and uh, the the comedy. Festival oh, you were was there. Just, well, in, when they used to do it at the Comedy Festival in Australia, it sucked. They, Nick, Mickey would do the Fat Cave and, and um, Mickey D we're talking about, who's the guy we've talked about many times. But Vance came back and said he didn't have a, yeah, such a it good was, time Yeah, it, it wasn't the same thing. I remember when you got kicked in the balls on stage. No, 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 no. No, no, but you I, had no, a trick. No, Brendan, you, yeah, Brendan. You, you have a, I like, remember like, when you get kicked in the balls seven different times. Yeah, yeah, exactly, in fairness. I know your trick. Yeah. Well, that, can, you, can you teach Jason? Yeah, we want you to teach Jason. I don't have jeans on. We had him he wear does. jeans I don't want to do that. Oh, <laughs> shit, what if you fuck up? I think, oh, I, think, oh. I think you've got a catchphrase there, son. Oh, <laughs> oh, going, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Those dudes on the beach do it for five wanna, bucks. Really? Jason, 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 Jason. Brennan's got a trick. Yeah, yeah. You won't get hurt. I know what he's going to do. He's going to say, lower your pants, spread your legs, make them tight in between your thighs, and then 
And then you'll hit me in the head behind with a bat or something. No, we're not. We'll be seated in front of you. We're so afraid you're going to snap. We're not fucking with you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's an ang- you can angle it basically so that your nuts go up and actually people don't reach them. Give it a go. And so it used to Brandon, be that if show, a guy was show, being stand up and show him how you do it. If, if, if a guy was being gobby in the crowd, you want me to take a blow to the nuts for you? You no, won't no, no. take a blow to the nuts. I get some. Tight ones on. The deal I used to make with the heckler was, you know, you think you're a big bloke, you think you're hard. You know what? I'll let you get up here and kick me in the nuts as hard as you can. Brendan used to run if out I'm of material really yeah. quick. Did yeah, I yeah. kick him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, I'm, uh, if I'm back up in under five seconds, my, I get to kick you in the nuts. And if not, my puppet comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I close with a song parody. Yeah. All right, now show him how you do the <laughs> kick in the nuts. He used to do a parody of achy breaking nuts. <laughs> It's called tone. Jason, come on, get kicked in the nuts. Show kicked him. in the nuts? Just he's gonna teach you how to do it, and we're gonna do it all the time. It's a, it's gonna be a party trick. Mm. If you do it, I'll do it afterwards. I'll do all it too. Right. You, you said that done. about stand up. Yeah. And I'm you not didn't gonna do, do it. it after. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it, I'll do it. We're at a party and they wanted me and Eddie to do stand up. And I said <laughs> no. I said I at said a at a party with like people feel, like covered with drugs. Eight people. And so I said and the, and Jason was like, Yeah, go ahead and do it. I said, I'll tell you what, if you go up and try and do five, me and Eddie will do it afterwards. He got up, died in his ass, and then, and, and we heckled, and him. we booed and heckled, and then we left the party. <laughs> oh, you cunts! And he's That's never not okay. And he's never done stand up ever. Yeah. That's not okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's Jason. I did that on courage. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not okay. That's not okay. No, it's not. It's Jason. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're going to put this on our YouTube channel. Come uh, on. Show them how. Me. You're not going to do it from behind. No, 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 in front, in front. Jason, it's I'm a- nervous. I'll be honest. Yeah, it's I'm not- really scared about ball shots. They hurt like if, a motherfucker. If you weren't yeah. nervous, it no matter wouldn't how be tough funny. you are, Brendan, those hurt. Brendan is a semi-professional wrestler in his own mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, hang on. I am going to Edinburgh in the middle to commentate on the wrestling. What wrestling? Uh, they've got a wrestling show mixing up with uh, stand-ups and, and, and wrestlers. And uh, Russell Kane... And uh, Patrick Monaghan are wrestling as baby faces, and I'm the heel commentator. Oh god, fucking uh, Patrick! Russell, Russell Patrick Monaghan will fucking wrestle yeah. after the ring bell's right, fucking yeah. gone. Oh, that can't fucking and, Jesus! I, and Russell Kane just hate wants Patrick to wrestle so wear tights. <laughs> Patrick Monaghan's one of the most fucking upstarty little cunts in the fucking industry, and I hope you can hear you fucking Iranian prick. <laughs> Now let's let's kick him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> on that Jimmy note, Jimmy boy, whoa. Well, I'm worried. There's that- very few. Have you ever heard me slag another comic off on this thing? Uh, you ever heard me really? Never when, no. never on the no. show. Never on the no. show. No. Never on the he, show. He's one of the few. He's one of the snidest little fucking pricks you'll ever meet. But the but for running long, running long, and then he, one time. I said, look, can you flash him to the lighting guy? And I saw him. I stood behind him while he's in the sound booth going, they might come up and ask you to flash him. Tell him to fuck off. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a nasty little piece of work. Now kick him in the nuts. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. Let no, him no. show you how to do it before yeah, you yeah, just yeah. volunteer I'm, it. I'm not going to kick you in the nuts. I'm just showing you how to take Lolita's. it. Lolita's. She's already done that, I think, once. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah she's done it metaphysically. No, we're going we're gonna to let Lolita kick like, you in the nuts. I, I get a guy up and I basically go, you can kick me in the nuts as hard as you want. And I just keel, I, I just lean forward, put my bum up a bit, and basically your nuts tuck up into your. Well, oh, that's not gonna work for me. Why? Why he's got low hanging nuts. Use microphone. Jason, use a fucking microphone. That's not gonna work. That won't work for me. Use a microphone. That's not gonna work. 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 No, you're, you, look, there's a gap between your ball sack. Yes. See how tight that is? Yeah, it's see, that's the trick. No, it's not. No, no. Oh, no. It's hitting my balls. <laughs> Jim <laughs> just kicked him in the nuts five times <laughs> to test it. <laughs> Did that get anywhere near your nuts? Yeah, it hit my left one a little. It grazed it. It's not fun. <laughs> I promise. The last couple were quite hard. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever told the heckle club story on the podcast? No. No, you can tell it. It's a good yeah, story. It's a great story. It's and a we've great got fucking three, story. Prevents is here, here as well. Were you there? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, was, was a, I, went to, I was losing my voice, so the, I yeah. didn't take any more drugs the, and went the, to that's bed. The beauty of the story is there's like several chapters well, to well, it. Well, here's the and thing. The night before start and tell, the night start, after. Start telling the story. We'll try not to go off on tangents. Actually, let, did, let did, Paul in for let this. Let Paul in for this. Jason, Jason, Paul, Jason come in, come step in, out of this one because you have a way of interrupting. He's right there. Yeah, yeah, but don't interrupt the story. I want to be able to look at him right there. Get off the thing. I'm on time for my part. Yeah, Paul, 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 get into the scene. He's on time. I just came from fucking Microsoft. This is Paul Provenza, the uh, the host of the uh, Green Room on Showtime. 
Eddie, he's been on the show before. Eddie, he brought Treadwell. Now there's some jeans you could kick a man in the nuts with. Yeah, you could. Oh take my a god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you I, bar I, them I, off from a bomber after he threw that pitch? I, I, I got nuts right here. This is, this is actual nut. <laughs> with lighty boy lipstick on them. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little early in the month of end of August, but yeah, soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love All the right. lady boys of Bangkok. Paul, when's my episode airing, by the way? A couple of weeks. Okay. Am I episode six? I, I, I'm not sure if yeah, you're Yeah, I got pushed all the way down, huh? You got to get the ratings early. Um, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> all no, right, so you're the closer. Tell, tell the story. Tell the story. You're the closer. Nothing, nothing can follow you, Eddie. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I, I've never actually told a story in any succinct fashion, so, so it, it's hard, but um, it started off at. Um, Fat Guys. Fat Cave. No, it didn't. It started ah, out at wrong um, a free beer show. We're at the free beer show and these bunch of uh, kids from... Cause, uh, the agree, kids explain from, what the free beer show is. The free beer is. show is kids from Oxford who decided that they would give the audience free beers, but they were just a warm palette of beers that they bought from a bottle shop. Tenants. So you'd have, Tenants, the really you'd fine have, stuff. You'd have one beer and go, I hate warm Did beer. Did you ever do the free spliff show? We have a lot of oh, people... No, no, I've done the free... Hold, hold, the hold free, on, guys. Yeah. You've got to set things up more. People don't even know what the Edinburgh Comedy Festival is. A lot yeah, of yeah, exactly. listen, There's yeah, a comedy yeah. festival in Scotland uh, and during the month of August, and there's how many comics there? Like 300? 400, 500 comics performing. There are a lot of there's comics. Over, there's, 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 there's about 2,300 shows happening simultaneously. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. it's hard to get an audience to your show. And everybody, if you're not one of the big names, it's hard to get an audience in. So people do gimmicky shit to get them in. And uh, one of them is... But also there's a, there's a late night comedy se- series, a whole bunch of different shows with different vibes and personalities and different venues. And one of them was the free beer show, which was these kids who financed the show basically by selling drugs. Just Oxford kids. <laughs> that, you know, know what's even better about the guys, sell- and I won't say their they names. Used to, they, used to pay, they used to pay their way through the festival yeah. by selling Coke during the festival. They were selling Coke and selling MDMA and all that type of stuff. And may I say, welcome to the two of them, um, if they're listening, and well done on just getting your law degrees. <laughs> Yeah. They're, bo- you know they're, bo- they're both, not, they're both lawyers now. It's so not a joke. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're both lawyers now. Yeah. A lot of people at the Edinburgh Fringe uh, really aren't in show business like like this. this like the management and agents. <laughs> yeah. Who still aren't if you've ever worked in the industry. But like if you're, like there's a group from some medical school in America that had, uh, um, you know, like a performing arts group and they decided oh, yeah. they would all spend the month in Edinburgh doing their medical school show uh and it was at like uh 11 a.m or something like that in you know in in some makeshift venue and um uh so they were all at the free beer show that night and so everybody that that got up they were heckling and they were being really obnoxious and noisy and they were a big part of the audience because there were like 20 of them and uh and i when i got up they started that shit and i just said okay all right you guys so what's the show you're doing clearly you want some attention we may as well use this to everybody's benefit why don't you tell us the show you're doing get it out of your system pass out the flyers so they all got up and they were well, doing this show at such and such time such and such a venue and they passed out flyers and they said okay and when they find when that settled down i said we're all coming tomorrow and we're going to do the exact same thing to you that you've done to us other people yeah no i can tell you exactly who was there it started paul provenza alex lazarus paul byrne me glenn wool Glenn Wool. Was Glenn with us? It was yeah. Glenn's idea. He's the instigator. Yeah. You're right. It started it was. With, right. So this was, right. this was like, an a, idea. This was like a week before, a week before is. the free beer show. It was just a long night of a lot of hilarity. And Glenn would get to the point very often. I don't know. I, I don't know if he slowed down, but at the time, he would get to the point very often where it would be easier for him just to stay high all night long to go do his children's show at 11. Yeah, yeah. Rather he than... Shows. He <laughs> works as an actor, dressed now, like a pineapple or something. <laughs> That's what I really want to talk I, I will. Wait, wait one second. Wait a second. So, yeah, because he was doing his, his own show and he was also doing one of those James Campbell's yeah, yeah. Uh, shows at 11. And, he, you know, around 7 or 8, he would have to be faced with that decision. Should I go to sleep or just plot on through? And um, when you stuck with him all the way and went and watched the show he did after staying up for two days straight, it was genius. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I may as well, to lend some structure to this. So, right, but this, in, so if, if this, initial, this initial incident was really just some sort of like drug-fueled early morning crazy thing. That just as the energy just settled down, Glenn Wool goes, uh, I was just sitting around a table. People had come and gone We were at Ed Burns' night. apartment and uh, well, Burns. Glenn was staying with them, I think. No, Ed and Glenn right. were Hold staying at that big well, wait, you, you left out the part that they all ordered, they were all making truffle tea. And I didn't know what truffle tea was. 
And they go, do you want a cup of tea? And I said, yeah. And I don't do like any heavy drugs. And I start drinking this tea and I go, well, what's truffle tea? And they're like, oh, it's like mushrooms. And I go, what? And they're like, yeah, it's psychedelic. And I went, ah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but there was a lot more uh, that fueled this than that. So that, that, that was like the least of the things that were uh, so being if I, uh, if I, if I, if I may, yeah. As it was relayed to me the following day, the beginning of the story that, that I heard was Paul Byrne said to me, it's 8 a.m. And the last thing you ever want to hear at 8 a.m. is Glenn Wall going, I've, I've got, got an, an idea. idea. Aha, the story leaks. Yes. So, <laughs> that no, no, is that true. part's correct. That is so true. he goes, I've got an idea. And we look up all bleary. And by the way, I want to say that the only drug I ever do is, is, is weed. So I'm already up for like two days without any natural uh, mm, um, mm, mm. things involved there. But so Glenn's in overdrive. But the shift <laughs> is about to happen where he, he crashes. Yeah. So he goes, I've got an idea. And he goes, look at all these early morning shows. Look at these shows at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. They have a book that has every show listed <laughs> at the thousands. festival. <laughs> and there are shows. This most really most of the part. comedy shows, stand-up comedy shows, are going 8 p.m., Plus, you know, like eight, nine, no, 10, no, 11. no, no, starting at fucking two. Yeah, they started two. Really? Yeah. Well, but, 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 but the stuff that's shows, early in the morning is either kids' shows or it's like the, like this, a like play, like a group a, from a, a medical school that has yeah, a medical school theater. show, yeah. and they got a they got that time slot. So he goes, but the way Glenn framed this to me was genius. He goes, you know, all these shows, I bet you they struggle every day. For audience, <laughs> I think we should all go and support one of our fellow acting groups here. We should go to the first show we can. It's like eight. And there were about ten fucked up people in this apartment. Uh, yeah, 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 At this time, yeah. So, so people started to peel off. So we decide that we're well, there gonna were go. There were people that chose not to go. <laughs> Alice or Barry, you pussy. <laughs> So we decide that we'll go. Well, on, we, we, we decide that we're going to go to the show. He was closing somewhere, yeah. but somewhere Alistair along the line, couldn't have gone there. He would have ripped the roof off the joint. <laughs> no, no, it would have struggled at first, but he would have turned it around. <laughs> I don't remember who came up with the idea after Glenn said, "Let's go to a show and support people." Was it you? And, Some, said, and we should. Somebody, I heard it was you that invented heckle club. Somebody nah. said. It, it, somebody it, said, "Let's heckle," was, and I said. Let's write down our heckles. Nah. We'll put them in a hat. You pick out of the hat. And you have heckle, to say and it. And you have to say you what's on the have piece to of say paper. It. But how we chose the show. This is the best part. I did not know this. <laughs> we decide to just riff through the book, and Glenn is just going to point. And he points to a I'll Catholic girls' school. Xavier, Xavier <laughs> Prep School from Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> You do? Edinburgh? Yeah. Hang on. Say it's that? an all it's an all girls school. And the play was and called And they are doing a play called oh. China Beach. No, it was or, called, I thought it was one next, one the from the heart. The one from the heart. Takes place at China Beach. No, it's about yeah, a whole bunch of China well, Beach yeah. nurses it's working like, in the like medical school. What year was this? This was we this was about 5 6 years ago. No, 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 no. I was drinking. It was 2000 through 2004. That sounds about right. Somewhere about in there. 2005, I think. Yeah. No, it was 2004. <laughs> yeah, it was so children. we go to the show. And now, Alex, you should tell people, you should let people in on who Alex Lazarus is because that's kind of key. Yes. How, why are you guys pointing to me to tell? I did. <laughs> because Alex Lazarev was a, a young puppy dog comedian who knew nothing and just loved to be around people who did know a lot, but anybody who knew anything... He was just an annoying open mic. Always gave Alex. He have. But yeah. everybody always gave Alex I always Alex feel shit, sorry shit. for Alex. He's a nice kid. Now, now, if he's I'm now, he's now a relationship Because my counselor. favorite tell of the story... He's not. He's he a, no, even worse. He does a show about... Um, but I mean, he like does it like as a seminar, um, uh, how to be successful with women. <laughs> <laughs> that guy... That guy yeah. does a seminar on how to be on successful how, with how women. How to be a successful That uh, guy could woman. that guy once showed up at my house in Manchester, right? Knocked on the door, it was raining, and this is how successful this cunt is. It's three in the morning. I'd met the guy like twice in my life. And me and Steve Hughes and Jason John Whitehead were living in this house and he went, Hey Jim man, how you doing? He goes, I just picked up this girl at S XS Malarkey and, I, and I've told her that I live at your house. Can I take her upstairs to bang her? And I'm like, all the rooms are being no, nah. no, <laughs> yeah. fuck off. He's one of those classic guys. That's as like well a that, deaf German. You guy. know, whenever you hear someone's version of events, and they're still like the fuck up in the story. 
but they're like, oh, I got screwed. And then they tell you the version and you're like, you're still the asshole in your story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, and we, this is your version. He- so if I may, my favourite tell is Paul Burns' version. And he says that when they go into the children's Wait, Catholic- you haven't even gotten to there. So we decide, we well, pick out- we, we ha- tag. <laughs> yeah, we pick out the fucking heckles. I remember, so oh, right, like, right. like had- you could write any anything you wanted on the on the thing because you weren't going to say that heckle. Somebody else was picking it. I pull out of a hat. My heckle says, "Die, nigger, cunt, die." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I. I have wrote to that one. Yell. <laughs> That's what I have to yell, and I have to do it. And I'm like, and it was like, you have to yell whatever is on your thing. So I'm like, oh, this. Why did I get this one? You know, as long as you did it when no black kids were on the stage, you're right. So we (laughs) were standing X. There wasn't. So we go, we go down to this place. We go to buy tickets at the front gate, and we're all fucking. You know, you can hold on, hold on. What did you have? I don't remember actually. It's. I wrote something like that cum in your throat makes you sound like blah, blah, blah. I forget. It was too long. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. But we, uh, you don't want to make a dated reference? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, went, we went to- I'm ashamed uh, of the fucking joke. We went to buy the tickets. And when we went to buy the tickets, the woman goes, we were all giggling and not farting. And br- yeah. I, I farted right in front of the woman, like as loud as I could. And, and, it, was like, goes, and it was like in an auditorium of like yeah, a medical school yeah, and in, she goes, in Edinburgh. And she something. goes- you know what? You guys can get all that shit out right now. Get it. I'm not doing a <laughs> Scottish accent, but she's like, get it out. I don't want it. It's not going in there. You're not going to act like this in there. And we're like, all right, all right, we'll calm down. <laughs> we'll calm down. Little does she know what we're about to do. Yes. So if I may, so as Paul Byrne told me. <laughs> Brendan, you were there. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, we have two people who were yes, there. I know, but they always leave this bit out. <laughs> uh, they always leave this bit out, and I love this bit. What? Is is that he says that they get in there and it's just so stoic that it's just they feel like scum. Well, we but thought, even turning we, up we, smelling. Yeah, I like always heard food. that bit of the story. I thought that story was implied that it was, no, it, was, no. it, was a, it was a drama about but, but, war. But there yeah, was it just, was yes, it was it was yeah. it was a, it was, it was a play about the Vietnam War and it was these little girls. I always had it set in World War Two in my story. Yeah, me too. You know these girls. You know these girls. Like and kids all raised all this money to come over here and, and do we it. go. And we go on the place. And like I said, it's an auditorium and like medical something. So it's like all this dark wood, and it's just a really. And there's fair. parents. It's all and their parents. The only watching. people there is about thirty people who are like either their parents or like the old relatives who live in Scotland. So there's a tacit friend, friends there, of theirs, or whatever. There's a tacit agreement among all of us. We look at each other. And, no, 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 no. There wasn't a tacit no. agreement among all of us. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, hold Hold on, hold on. We all looked at each other, kind of like we're not gonna do it. Now. We we all filed. We filed into our we filed into our rows and our seats, and we and and we all went separately because we went in separate separate uh, entrances because we wanted to not be as annoying as we already were. So we sit down in the row, and Eddie is sitting next to me, and I think Paul Byrne is sitting next to him, and the three of us look at each other. We're looking over these bald heads and blue hair at these little girls, just. Tr- just You're acting their little <laughs> arts out. There's so many reasons there to get an erection. It's outrageous. I know, right? <laughs> and 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 Eddie and I lean in and just go like this to each other. Just go, no, no. And Burn goes, nah. and, I, and I. So I go, I go. Okay, listen. Let's just sit here for a little while, and then one at a time, we'll all go out so that we don't create any ruckus yeah like we didn't it was bad enough we felt shitty yeah about no being no we there. see it we and see we also it. realized that right, the, right here it will be a good story about, about us you know walking out with our tails between our legs not having the balls to yeah, do yeah this, there, right? no one there could do it but it was out of like he, we were being respectful yeah exactly we went, we went from this hilarious fantasy in our heads to the reality and how horrible a situation like going to the everybody. LPA Yes. It's just like yeah, it's, it's the exactly LBA. the same. We had feel. all these ideas about having a laugh at the midget and we convention. We get down there and it's like, oh, stop saying no midget. Oh, sorry. Have you learned There's nothing? No way. There's too, it, 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 the level of disrespect is so much. That's the thing is that the, no the comic idea do. doesn't involve other human beings. Right. And then when you're actually there, you just go, I, so I do have be, some morality be, in me left. And being some, uh, everyone there was pretty much like a seasoned veteran in comedy. And the open mic or Alex Lazarus sitting next to me. He no, goes, no, no, he, no, no, no. He said to me, I'm going up top to do my heckle. <laughs> and I went, don't, don't, no. I couldn't even get it out of my mouth quick enough. And he was gone to go, don't. 
and he just ran up behind me, and I and just got lower in my seat, and I looked at Paul. <laughs> and now, like, yeah, no, we're we, fucking done. We just, we just went. This oh, is this gonna, is not going to be good. Well, I heard he and just wait, said wait, it. Did oh, he stand up? No, no, no. He went all the way up, up to the way top, went of the way up to the top of the auditorium, not far from a, an, an upper <laughs> exit. And, and I need to tell you the point in the play. Where, but do you yes, remember the line? You. Yes, do you remember the line? The girl comes in. The scene in the film is it's her first day at like a mash unit. She's a nurse in a mash unit in the play, and they they've just had like a lot of casualties coming in and uh they brought a guy like off a helicopter so they've got a guy on a gurney and they bring him in and he's got blood everywhere and she goes oh my gosh i don't know what to do i don't know what to do i don't know what to do he's lost his leg i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and all of a sudden i hear from the top suck his cock <laughs> And then a door we a, a weak slam and the pit a patter of Alex Lazarev running down marble stairs. And Paul told me it was done with such timing. Perfect flawless timing. Phenomenal part of the play. But like no one reacted. Everyone flawless took timing. ages to even realize that it had happened, that it was so weird. Paul said, like, he was like, because he was sitting a bit apart, he was like on the ground, he fucked off, and then all the guys, slowly but surely, started to try and filter their way out of the room. And prevents got locked in. I got locked <laughs> because in because they a, they tried to get out one by one without anyone noticing them. And and, and, so and they, they did such a outside. shit job of it. I just said, I'm in for the show. Yeah, I'm just so, here. Was it was it a good show? This is the beauty. <laughs> this is the beauty. He walks out. They go. Those so, kids so, were very good. And he, and he and he goes. He lights up a van. Goes. You know, it wasn't a bad play. <laughs> <laughs> now there, there's a story behind it. We all get in the cab and. Uh, and we're like, let's get the fuck out of here. You know, we're going to get arrested or something for this. And we're on the cab. We're about to leave. And Alex comes out to the cab <laughs> and goes to me. I'm with Glenn Wool and someone else. And he goes, where the fuck are you guys going? You didn't do your heckles. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we're coming back in. So Just get, he goes... I'm going back in to do another. And we're like, what? <laughs> and it was actually like like a Vietnam War movie. No! We're trying so, to grab him down. Yeah. So here's where we come full circle. Fast forward to 24 hours later. We're at the fat, ca- we're at the fat caves. Some guy heckles. Fat caves were where the show was. Yes, was where the show was that we were talking to begin with. And, and it's Sunday night and it's getting many comics to interact as possible. And it's Eddie, me... And Ava Vidal. So Eddie and I are on stage together. Ava's been on, and we're all just interacting, trying to think of an ending to a bit. Eddie tells the Heckle Club story, and uh, and Alex is in the audience. And I've just done the nut trick where I've had some guy kick me in the nuts. I'm back sure. up in under five seconds. Sure. So then Eddie goes, you know what? On behalf of the Xavier Catholic schoolgirls thing, I think you have to do Brendan's trick, Alex. And he gets him up on stage, and. And he goes, you have to let a member of the audience kick you in the nuts as hard as you can. I've heard this as well. And so then, so, but Alex doesn't know my trick. But also, you know what the Edinburgh Festival's like. Everyone in the audience is like a drama student or something. So this girl gets up on stage and starts hamming for like fucking... 15 minutes doing like a Tekken thing, trying to get as much attention as she can, going, yoy, yoy, to the extent where the whole audience is just screaming at this girl, kick him in the fucking nuts, right? And then they're just, everyone's going nuts. She will not do it. And so then finally, Ava walks up, big, you know, she's six foot, black woman. Big goes, boots on. She had fucking she had fire high boots on. on. Pointy boots on. Just gets up and goes, oh, for fuck's sake, flicks this girl away like an aphid. <laughs> And kicks Alex in the nuts, the hardest kick, lifts him off the ground, like with these pointed boots. He pukes immediately. He hit the deck. He hit the deck. He, I've never seen anybody get kicked in the nuts and just fall face first. I've never seen such Funk a but The thing out. is, Ava probably still fucked him afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but so then, then a little while later comes part two of the story. There's yes. actually three parts to it. Part two parts. of the story was this thing of the free beer show. So, so I say, you know, we're all going to come to your show, or we're going to we're going to do to you. We're going to abuse you the way you've been abusing us here tonight. Uh, and I tell the audience to come along. Oh, this is funny. Sure enough, the next day I go, there's about eight or ten comics there, mm. and like 20 people from the fucking audience. And I walk up to the desk with the person selling tickets, who was one of the people there in the room that night, and I go, 30, please. 
<laughs> and he looks up and goes, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, I told you we were coming back. And he went, okay. And the fucking idiot sold us the tickets. But he has to. And the fucking idiot sold us the tickets. Okay, so now we're 30 out of an audience of, what, 50? Yeah. Maybe at that point. I'm amazed these cunts got 20 to begin with. We started calling each other. Also they all sat in different seats and called in across and the room to each other. Dean Cameron would get on his phone and go, hi. Yeah, he'd be in the front row. So he's like, even got the spill from the stage lights I on. I bet him. you the other 20 people you know, got into it. <laughs> yeah. It was great. At one point, they stopped the show and they were like, what, you know, you, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And then people who weren't even us, people who had come from the audience got up and went, because you fucked up the show we paid to see last night. Just what you deserve. Oh. You happy. And then we, we were bulletproof. Oh, it was audience people. But like, Paul, it was from so, what I heard, how, like, some of that shit guys, that we did was These so guys funny. would call each other across the, uh, like, from one aisle to the other and be like, hey, where are you sitting? I'm over here. And then they'd <laughs> no, get Dean, up, I'm over here. <laughs> what are you doing? We're over here. Dean Cameron was in the front row and he'd pick up the phone and go, yeah, 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 I'm seeing a show. Uh, nah, you know. <laughs> And they're they're doing their show while this is all going on in the audience. I heard Dean Cameron's best line. Somebody did something in the show, and he goes, "And scene." Yeah, he would just go, "And scene." <laughs> and, uh, and and we started calling each other, and then we started texting. Uh, uh, Dean Cameron's the guy who did the Nigerian. Did you see a deal? I'll tell that story if you want. Yeah, go on then. Fuck it, fucker. Let's do it. <laughs> I, um, are, you, this, this is a true story. I'm at the Edinburgh Festival, and uh, Paul Sinner. Who's a doctor, mind you, had drugs on him. <laughs> and and so me, Paul Sinner. So Paul Sinner is an Indian, an Indian doctor. He's a, he's a gay Indian guy. He's a good friend of mine, Paul. I didn't know he was gay and I didn't know he's a doctor. You're missing out on some of the best stories. Does he need to suck a dick in front of you? Oh, oh he once told me this story. You've got the opposite of a gay doctor. He, he uses more male <laughs> prostitutes than you do toilet paper. Yeah. Like an, uh, like. He said to Jim once, he goes, how much do you spend on boy prostitutes, uh, Paul? And he goes, Jim, let me put it this way. I'm a doctor. I spend all the money I make from comedy on boys. And he went, and I am gigging every weekend. <laughs> tell him, tell him about I'll his tell, pulling technique. I'll, I'll tell where him, he I'll, always tries to turn a straight guy. I'll tell, I'll where he the, the, the guy thing in the is, crowd. I hope he's not upset because he's a friend of mine. But he's, a, he's, his words are that he's attracted to the people he think would want to beat him up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's his time. So, so one the one, story. One time we're in, uh, one time. No, this is a different. One time we're in Newcastle, um, yes. which which is a real working class. This is where the Geordie Show. Well, working class, nice people, part of England, right? And we're out there, and uh, we did a show at this club called the Hyena, where the apartments above the comedy club to place at Pittsburgh. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, it's a Pittsburgh yeah, type place. Very, very similar. Right, to right. So, so the, the, it, we're in this club, and then you know when you meet like working class lads who have known that Paul has said that he's gay, but it's like, you know, we're, we're all right, us. We're okay. We're talking to a gay person. We're not punching him. <laughs> Look how tolerant we are. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they, they, We're not like our dads. We're, we're really progressive I'm, guys. I'm right? ready for my gay. Yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> so I was there. I was there. And like uh, we're all chatting, the group of us, and there was these two young, quite handsome-looking guys in their early 20s. And then they were saying, oh, do you guys want to keep out drinking? I think I was part of the motivation to keep out drinking. I think they wanted to drink with me more than Paul, but I was like, yeah. And then Paul went, if we go out drinking, I'm going to sleep with one of you. And they were like, oh, cut it out. <laughs> and then I could <laughs> see the evil in Paul's eyes. Eyes and I went, I went, I don't want to be here for this gay bashing. Yeah. Right? Jim, Jim, nicknamed, Jim nicknamed him the sinner. <laughs> so he, he Paul got, the sinner. Paul the sinner. So I, I go up to this room and I think there was some girl that I was up there with. Like I was, because I was still up sitting in the living room. There was someone I was still up there with. So they go out drinking. I'm upstairs with this girl, right? And then I hear like in the street, you fucking faggot. You fucking poofta, you fucking cunt. And it's just Paul punching himself. And then, no, <laughs> and, and then I and then I heard then I then I heard the, these words. It's four hundred pounds. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so so I go. Well, so I stay up. I'm like, I'm staying up for this. And then I go, and Paul comes in like nothing has happened. <laughs> and, he, and he opens the door and I said, what happened, Paul? I just heard like these guys like pushing you against a dumpster and fucking yelling at you. And all this type of stuff. I go, what happened? He goes, we had a good night out. We were all drinking. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, I said, look, 
I'm willing to give you all the money that I've earned this weekend if one of you will suck my cock. <laughs> and then they started to hit me. <laughs> and, you know, I earned 400 pounds this weekend. It's a really they, dry they, guy. Yeah, and then he was Super like... Super intelligent. You he, know, he was like... On he, he, he was now. like... Uh, he was like, they could have bought a house with that money. <laughs> 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 but he's like... He's, he's ranked in the top 20 quizzes in Britain. He's on Quizmaster now. He's a great guy. Right, so I'll tell you this story. So I'm out with him, um, Ava Vidal, Matt Kirshen. So I've got an Indian, I've got a, a man who looks like a child, <laughs> and a woman that looks like a man. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I've got these... I've got these you four. The kingdom you together? really have moved to America, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you have burned the, the burnt. No, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Ava's just not been very. No, not- we we just when we say stuff on the show, we just think nobody listens to the show. I, I, I just they will once you start slagging comics off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, this is the, I stand by my Patrick Monaghan thing. Ava's just not been very nice to me the last few years. I used to like Ava, but we went on a TV show and she did one of those things where she goes, "I've had to put up." with comedians saying the N-word on TV for years. And I went, what comedians? We're on a TV show. It was one of those moments. Yeah, which, which, which ones? Because I've been in a lot of clubs without black people even being there. I've never heard a comic say it, not once in Britain. And she goes, well, you obviously aren't listening to the right people. I go, I'm one of the most offensive guys out there and I've still not heard it. And she sort of implied that I say it. So I sort of, I have my little thing against her. So anyway... Now, that was on TV, on BBC, on, a, on like not a comedy show, like on a fucking thing talking about racist comics, and she played me off as a bit of a... Uh, right, so the four of us were on drugs, and it got to about uh, five in the morning, six in the morning, and uh, I, was, I had a one-bedroom apartment, and I said, look, you guys can stay up and take as many drugs as you want. Um, I'm going to go to bed, but enjoy, right? And so I went to bed, and I was laying in there, and then I had Ava Vidal crawl in there and just sort of crawl on top of me like an hour later. I woke up to it. It was scary as fuck. So anyway, so she crawled on top of me and then I sort of, my girlfriend was arriving really soon after that. Um, that uh, Terry that I was going out with for years and she left me for another guy. So I used to cheat on you all the time. <laughs> anyway, so, so I'm laying in bed and, and I was thinking, fuck, my girlfriend's going to catch me. So this thing crawls into bed and... <laughs> And anyway, so, so I went, oh, you have to get out. And I sort of kicked her out. And then I, I get in there. I, I, she leaves the house and I go after Paul and Paul's laying there in bed. And, uh, and I go, Paul, Paul, you wouldn't believe this. Avidel just creeped into my bed. And he goes, you think that's weird? She woke me up and asked if I would join her with you in the bed, right? And then there, wow. was, a, there was a bit that went through my brain that went, I've never had a real good threesome with two guys and a girl. I've never had a black woman. I've never had an Indian. If Matt Kirshen stayed and I could have had a kid, I could have ticked every fucking box. <laughs> that's, that's the trifecta there, you know, man. That's fucking everything. The, the perfection and the brevity of the punchline justifies the brutalness of the story. <laughs> Whatever that meant. That could be your defence. Yeah, yeah. No, she's not very nice. I'll say that she's not a very nice person. I like Ava. She doesn't look happy. In yeah, I got on all right with Ava as yeah, well. I think Ava's she, fine. No, she's been very cunty to me, and I was always very nice to her. Mm. Mm. But you know, I get she drunk and her. say things and don't remember them. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a very interesting episode because we haven't. Brendan, do, do, do you do you want to plug uh, your web pages, Twitters, things like that? Don't you have a book? Uh, Fear of Hat Loss in Las Vegas. What's it called? Fear of Hat Loss in Las Vegas. Catchy. What's the book about? Uh, it's about when me, Prevenza, and Barry went to Vegas in pursuit of a photograph and took mushrooms and Prevenza. What was the bought. photograph? You know, what were you after? I was after a, a picture of us on a convertible with the Vegas skyline behind oh, us. Oh, okay. okay. Why did you choose that title? Fear of Hat Loss in Las Vegas? Fear, uh, fear, fear of Hat Loss. I'm fear of loathing. The whole, thing, in the whole thing actually happened kind of organically where uh, I was doing a lot of mushrooms at the time. I was really fucking nuts and was seeing you know visions or what i perceive to be visions and mm. i wanted to go to vegas and be in that picture because i'd split up with my <coughs> missus you have to read the book but there's a lot of delusion going on there that's, a lot of bending of the truth but just, well i'm gonna finish this episode you guys have been great for listening thank you i am you, uh, desperate it. to show you geordie shaw i want to see how hard well, we'll, you laugh we'll keep you around for the next episode uh brendan's gonna be here if you stick around and you listen on tuesday you're gonna hear brendan's gonna be back paul will be back and we have kehlani lay coming on porn star kehlani lay who has had sex with Mandingo, the biggest fucking cock in the world. And she's about 
as big as his cock. Uh, Jim specials coming out on Showtime, so uh, watch Showtime. Uh, Paul's got a show called uh, The Green Room on Showtime. It's airing. It's a series. Uh, J- uh, Brendan's been on it. I've been on it. Jim's been on it. So uh, watch that. Oh, we've got a new phone number, and I know you. It's a lo- like eighty percent of our listeners are still here right now. Call into three one zero eight five three three eight seven nine. Questions. If you just want to tell us anything, do it, and we're gonna actually play them on the show and answer your questions. And uh, we've got a few right now. They're fucking hysterical. Uh, you guys, uh, you've been great. Please uh, keep up the donations. Go to Jim and Eddie Talk Shit dot com to do it. You can get so uh, my website. Oh, what is Brendan Burns Comedy dot com? Brendan Burns. It's B R E N D O N D O N. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Brendan thanks Burns Comedy dot com. Also go to Jim and Eddie Talk Shit dot com. T shirts are still available. We're gonna have to get more extra extra larges. Apparently, our our fans are fat cunts. Um, <laughs> and email us. Keep up the emails at Jim and Eddie at Yahoo dot com. Go to our YouTube page. Stitcher, Stitcher, download our website, get the app on your smartphone, use the promotional code Jim and Eddie. And I want to thank Machete, Luke, Jesse, Lalit, uh, IO, PK, intern, everybody, Ray Roy, Ray Roy. Um, and uh, Jason, thanks for coming back. We missed you. And uh, find Southern Gentlemen one more time. And uh, that's it, everybody. Talking shit. Talking shit.